When I teach this class in person, this is a little demo I like to do. This demonstrates how important it is to use a quality thread and quality needles. What I like to ask is, how many times do you think a specific spot of thread goes through the eye of the needle before it is actually stitched into the fabric? This little demo is gonna answer that question. And generally, it's a lot more times than you would think. What I'm gonna do, is on the thread, I am gonna make a mark. So this is just the Sharpie pen. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but there's a black mark right there on the thread. I'm gonna pull, because I kind of took up some slack there to do that. I'm gonna pull a little bit of that through so that it won't take quite so long to do this little demo. So that mark is now kind of somewhere about in here. I'm gonna put this little piece of cardboard in here so that you can see the mark. So my mark is right here. So it's traveled from basically up by the top of the take up lever down to here. And I'm gonna move this over just a little bit so that you can see. So I started stitching here. So it's gone from here to here. And that mark still, I'm gonna just hand crank this. So there's the mark, and you can see it coming down. It still hasn't even gotten to the eye of the needle. I'm gonna take a couple more stitches, just kind of slow. All right, let's see where we are. So there's the mark, and it's gotten as far as here. So I'm gonna stitch a little bit further. So there's our mark, and it's still only as far as here. So right there, you can see it coming down. It's only now to the top of the needle. So we're getting close. Oh, I may have actually just missed it. But if we watch it come down, so there's the mark, and it's gone through the eye of the needle. I'm gonna say that that's the first spot that it went through the eye. So I am gonna mark right here. I may have missed it by just a couple stitches. So now I'm just gonna sew until that mark stitches into the fabric and then I'm gonna count those stitches. And right here, I'll kind of move this out of the way so that you can see it. So here it has stitched in. So I'm just gonna take that out of the machine and I'm gonna count those stitches. This is the section that we stitched. This is the first place that the mark entered the needle and then it stitched all of these stitches and then this is where it was finally stitched in. So I counted and there's 35 stitches here. So this piece of thread, by the time it's sewed in, went in and out of the eye of the needle 70 times because the needle goes down and back up for every single stitch. So between here and here, 70 times. If you ever run into the scenario where you get shredded thread up above the eye of the needle, what happens is some of the thread starts to break, but some of it will stay intact. So as the needle is going up and down, part of that thread is just continuing to shred while the rest of it is attempting to continue to stitch. This animation shows the needle forming the stitch with the bobbin. So as you can see here at the start, the needle goes in, so there's one pass of the thread through the fabric, and then when it comes back up, there's the second pass, and then the forming of the stitch. So for each stitch, the needle goes in and out twice. As you saw with the demo, the thread goes through quite a lot of wear just to form the stitch. Using a good quality thread will help to reduce breakage, reduces lint, helps to keep the tension uniform and produces a solid, stable stitch. One of the ways that you can test your thread is just to run it between your fingers. 
and see if it's nice and smooth and uniform. A good quality thread will not be lumpy or bumpy. Common thread fiber types. Natural fibers. Cotton. Cotton is a soft, fluffy, stable fiber that grows in a bowl. B-O-L-L, -L, not B-O-W-L. A staple fiber means that the cotton grows to a specific length and depending on the type of cotton, that staple fiber can be short or long. And as a general rule, the longer the fiber, the staple fiber, the better the cotton. Advantages of cotton, it's soft and durable and it's available in various weights and it's easy care. Disadvantages, low sheen and not quite as strong as polyester and low quality cotton can be very linty. This is an image of a cotton bowl while it's still on the stem. It goes through processing and it's carded and you would eventually come out with this, which is the staple fiber, a fixed length fiber. And again, depending on the type of cotton, that can vary. But then those are twisted together and made into thread. Cotton threads can have many finishes, mercerized, gassed, glazed, and then you can have a cotton wrapped poly, which is a pretty common thread. The other natural fiber thread that we deal with is silk. It is made by a silkworm. Silk is a natural protein fiber and the shimmering appearance of silk is due to the triangular prism like structure of the silk fiber. So remember that triangular part that will come into play in a little bit. Here's an image of a silkworm with its little silk cocoon. And then this is how they unwrap the thread. So basically the silkworm secretes the protein, winds it into a cocoon, and then those cocoons are boiled and they have to pick out the little strand and then they basically unwrap it. The next section is man-made fibers. So the first of these is polyester. Polyester is basically a polymer that contains the ester functional, this is science content here, folks. So polymers that contain the ester functional group in every repeated unit. Basically, it is made from petroleum. Here's the important thing that you need to know. It can, in fact, be an infinite length. Uh, when you hear the term spun poly, basically what that means is that the polyester is produced in a staple length to mimic cotton. It's also textured to mimic cotton. Filament poly is one continuous fiber. Think fishing line. Trilobal poly has a high sheen and it is also continuous and it is created to look like rayon and or silk. And again, so the trilobal is to mimic the shape of the silk fiber. Lots of advantages. It's durable, it's strong, it's color fast, retains its shape, will recover stretch, can be made to emulate natural fibers such as cotton and silk, and it can also be produced with texture, which will allow it to stretch and give, so it's ideal for active wear. Nylon, also man-made and or synthetic fiber. It's a synthetic polymer composed of polymides. It's thermoplastic, generally made from petroleum. Biggest advantage is strength. Disadvantage has a very low melting point, so not heat resistant not color fast, will yellow over time, can also become brittle with time, laundry, and exposure. Then the final synthetic or man-made fiber is rayon. And to me, rayon is kind of an interesting fiber. It starts out as a natural product, meaning that it it's produced from cellulose fiber, and usually that comes from wood or agricultural products. It can even come from some 
fruit. So basically what happens is that cellulose fiber is highly processed. And by the time it comes back out that other end of that processing, it, even though it started as a natural product, by the time you get to the end, it really isn't natural anymore whatsoever. It's just that that's how it started. The production process is pretty much the same as either nylon or polyester. So advantages, it is soft, it has a high sheen, and it's relatively heat resistant. Not color fast, not as strong or durable as polyester. This little diagram is a very simplistic view of how synthetic fibers are processed. So up at the very top where it says liquid solution, that represents a hopper where either the polyester or nylon or rayon is sitting in that hopper. It is fed through the next little section, which the picture is showing the spinneret. And a spinneret kind of looks like a shower head, but basically what happens is the liquid solution is forced through that spinneret. That spinneret, the holes in the spinneret can be different shapes, which will create a different style of filament or thread. And you can see it passes through the spinneret there's the filaments is the next section and then after it has be it's turned into each individual filament there can be additional processing done it can either go into a water bath or it can get blasted by air a lot of times if it's um, blasted into water that is one of the ways that they can create textured threads for like the stretch threads or the woolly nylons that sort of thing and then after that processing it is in fact the thread this next little picture is also a spinneret head and you can see there's multiples in that one head and the diagram underneath shows the shape of the hole in the spinneret and then based on what kind of solution is going through or how long it has to process will determine the actual end shape of that but that's in essence a trilobal shape that's trying to emulate the shape of the silk fiber. Thread constructions. Spun thread. Spun threads are made from staple fibers, either cotton or polyester. And once again, if it's polyester, as it was being produced, it was chopped into staple fiber length to emulate cotton. Those fibers are twisted together and processed to form a single yarn and or thread. An example of that would be the Mettler Silk Finished, which is 100% cotton. And then there's core threads. So these are made by taking staple fibers and wrapping it around a, a core of either cotton or polyester. And a good example of this would be the Metro Scene. Textured threads, again, depending on how they're produced, whether it be through the dye or the after processing, would create what is considered a texture thread. So think woolly nylon, which is kind of fuzzy and fluffy. Also the maxi lock stretch. These threads generally have extra stretch to them and are commonly used in sportswear, lycra leggings and things of that nature. Monofilament thread. This is one single continuous filament, either nylon or polyester. Think fishing line in sewing scenarios, think invisible thread. Because invisible thread really is just a very, 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 very fine fishing line. And it does have a little bit of give and stretch to it. Twisted multi-filament thread. So these are continuous filaments of either polyester or nylon, and they are twisted together and then plied, meaning there is more than one of them. So an example would be polyester, or rayon embroidery thread. And usually those are two ply, meaning there are two strands that are twisted together. Laminate or flat thread, this is bonded layers, usually of mylar, and then it's sliced into a specific width, usually only a millimeter or two. This literally is flat. It is not round thread, it is flat. 
When we get to the metallics, I will show you a sample of the flat thread. Thread weights and why it's important to know the weight of your thread. And maybe even more important than knowing the weight of your thread is knowing how to find out information on the weight of your thread. So thread size measurements can be done either by weight or by length. So thread weight is determined by how many meters it takes to weigh one gram. This is usually labeled as WT or NM. Sometimes it's labeled as NO, but technically that's a whole nother scenario. We're not even going to go into that because it's just going to get confusing. Generally though, WT is what you'll see on most threads. The higher the number, the finer the thread because it takes more meters to weigh that one gram. So an example, embroidery thread is 40 weight. So 40 meters weighs one gram. When thread is measured by length, it's actually just the opposite. So it's the weight in grams of a specific amount of thread. So in text weights, it's the weight in grams of 1,000 meters. In text weight, if 1,000 meters weighs 25 grams, that would be a text 25. For really, really fine threads, and often this is not necessarily for sewing, and this term is most commonly used in hosiery, denier is the weight of 9,000 meters of thread that weigh a gram. In denier, if the 9,000 meters weighs 1,120 grams, that would be considered 120 denier. Something that you will also see commonly is something like 120 slash 2. In essence, what that means, it's two strands of 120 denier. The total weight of that would be 240 denier. In length measurements, the higher the number, the thicker the thread. In weight, the higher the number, the finer the thread. Have I confused you yet? Possibly. Nobody's going to test you on that. This is a little conversion because, of course, not everybody calls their stuff the same because that would make it way too easy. And this is a rough indication of the needle sizes that you should use. But here's what I'm going to say about needle size. And if you're ever concerned that you are not using the correct needle for the weight of thread that you've got, on the reference sheet that you can download, the link should be in the video description. There are links to most all of the thread manufacturers that we sell at Montevilla. In that documentation, it will have the needle that you should use. And on the Mettler, it's literally right on the stand that has all of that thread. So just know that if you're ever in question, this is kind of a general guide, but know that the specific things will be in all the literature on the websites for all of the thread manufacturers. This little example shows a bunch of different thread weights starting at the top with an 80 weight, which is very fine, down to the very bottom to an 8 weight, which is quite heavy. That 8 weight is perfect for using in the looper of your serger or for bobbin work. That will actually not go through the needle, the eye of the needle for any needle for the most part. To use that as a sewing thread on the top, you would you could do it by hand. The 12 weight really is about as heavy a weight as you're gonna wanna actually sew with or embroider with. This is kinda interesting because I have people ask me this all the time and I have a huge blow up here. Both of these are 30 weight. The bottom one is cotton and the top one is rayon. And it's very slight but the cotton thread looks thicker than the rayon thread, but yet they are both 30 weight. Here's the deal. Different types of fibers weigh different amounts. So even though the cotton is 30 and the rayon is 30, the cotton is kind of a fluffier fiber. So the fiber itself weighs a different amount. So even though the weight of the thread is going to give you an indication of its thickness, it is not the end all be all because the diameter of these two threads is in fact different, even though they weigh the same amount.
So just know that. In the video description below, there will be a link to the needles and thread reference list. This has a ton of links on it for all kinds of useful information from the needle companies and also the thread companies. It's a great source of information.